Hello everybody, it's Dr. Yu here, a family doctor in Canada. These days I've been getting a lot of questions from patients about whether or not they should get the new RSV vaccine for adults age 60 and over. If you have the same question, stick around to the end of the video for my answer. First, let's briefly explain what RSV is and why we have a vaccine against it. RSV stands for Respiratory Syncytial Virus an RNA-based virus, named because it usually infects the human respiratory system, and when lung cells become infected with RSV, the cells usually fuse together into giant aggregate structures called syncytia, which, if you think about it, can make breathing quite difficult. That's why RSV causes 160,000 deaths each year around the world, and 64 million people are infected globally each year during each RSV season. So it's quite contagious, even more so than the flu. Unfortunately, infection with RSV unlike infection from some other viruses, doesn't confer long-term immunity against RSV. So anyone can become reinfected by RSV over and over throughout the years. Now most healthy young adults can just brush it off and experience an RSV infection like a cold. But infants, children under one year old, and the elderly can be hospitalized and even die from RSV. This slide shows the major risk factors that predict hospitalization from an RSV infection. We can see that the older the individual, the higher the risk for hospitalization. Also, pre-existing health issues such as COPD, chronic obstructive lung disease, congestive heart failure, hematologic malignancies or blood-borne cancers like lymphoma, stroke, and chronic kidney disease all increase risk of hospitalization and death from RSV. To make things worse, there are no effective antivirals to treat RSV once someone gets it. So over the years, there have been many efforts to make a durable and effective vaccine against RSV to prevent its deadly complications. But the first RSV vaccine prototypes in the 1960s were unfortunately poorly constructed, and when injected into children, it not only didn't prevent them from infection, but made the RSV disease worse once they were infected. Two children even died from this enhanced RSV disease. Now this obviously set back the RSV vaccine efforts quite a bit. It wasn't until 2023 that scientists were able to isolate and stabilize the RSV's F protein, the fusion protein, which the virus uses to bind and enter human cells, that a safe and effective RSV vaccine was produced. Note that this is the same technology that produced other reliable vaccinations, like the hepatitis vaccines and the shingles vaccine. So it's safe, tried and true technology. And this vaccine is called the Respiratory Syncytial Virus Prefusion F Protein Vaccine. Now that's a mouthful, so it was given the brand name Arexv by its manufacturer GSK. The Phase 3 randomized control trial supporting its safety and efficacy was published in the New England Journal of Medicine, one of the world's most reputable medical journals, in February of 2023. And it received US FDA approval in May of 2023, and approval from Health Canada in August 2023. Over 25,000 people were enrolled in this study, all older adults aged 60 and over. They were followed for an average of 6.7 months after being given either the vaccine or placebo. And the vaccine demonstrated a 72% reduction in overall RSV infections, plus an 83% reduction in RSV pneumonia, or lower respiratory tract lung disease, and finally, a 94% reduction in severe RSV pneumonia requiring hospitalization. This is excellent effectiveness. Basically, if you're an adult over age 60, you will very likely have excellent protection against RSV pneumonia requiring hospitalization in your first year after getting the vaccine. Now, what about the potential harms? First, the side effects. Turns out the vaccine is generally very well tolerated with side effects that are transient and common to all vaccines, such as injection site pain, redness, or swelling, as well as fatigue, fevers and chills, headache, muscle pains, and joint pain. Now, there weren't enough patients in the study to be certain of what very rare, serious adverse events were truly caused by the vaccine. But like all new drugs and vaccines, post-marketing surveillance will be in place to monitor for any sign of any serious but rare complications. For now though, I personally wouldn't worry about potentially very rare serious side effects. Another issue is the timing of taking this vaccine with other vaccines that we get during the fall each year, such as the flu and COVID vaccines. The manufacturers did note that administering the flu vaccine at the same time as this RSV vaccine did produce slightly more local and systemic side effects and slightly more potential immune-mediated diseases, PIMDs. These are the serious adverse events like Guillain-Barre syndrome 
and other demyelinating disorders. So until we know more, if you're going to get the RSV vaccine, get it at least two weeks before or after your flu and COVID and other vaccinations. Now the other harm, of course, is harm to your wallet. In Canada, this vaccine costs 300 Canadian dollars and is usually not covered by most insurance programs. Now some provinces are publicly funding it for long-term care and the very frail elderly. But for the vast majority of people in their 60s, the vaccine is still an out-of-pocket expense. Finally, this last point is not really a harm, but it is a limitation of the study. Participants were only monitored for 6.7 months. So we don't really know if the protective effects of the vaccine will last for more than one RSV season. We hope so. RSV antibodies and RSV-specific T-cells generated by the vaccine do persist after 12 months, but whether that means anything about persistent protection against RSV disease for the many years after getting the vaccine, that remains to be seen. So, if you're somebody 60 years of age or over, should you get the RSV vaccine? Keep in mind, Canada's National Advisory Committee on Immunizations, or NACI, is still reviewing the RxV data and has not given their recommendations about who should be given this vaccine. So, what I'm about to say is purely my own educated guess, based on the data that I've presented to you. It is not medical advice, and you should speak with your own doctor about whether or not you should get the vaccine. Personally, I think anybody thinking about getting the vaccine should consider how much it costs them financially, and balance that with their own medical history, like what chronic medical conditions they have, and consider the fact that we don't know how long protection from the vaccine lasts. If you are younger, closer to age 60, and with little or no medical risk factors, and if money is tight, you may want to hold off on getting the RSV vaccine this year. Conversely, if you are more elderly, like age 80 or older, and you have one or more of these specific conditions putting you at higher risk for RSV complications and hospitalization, including some conditions that aren't listed, such as if you're immune compromised or take immune compromising drugs, and if paying 300 Canadian dollars is not a problem for you, you should think about getting the RSV vaccine and give it at least two weeks between getting the RSV vaccine and your other fall vaccinations like flu or COVID. So that's it for my summary about the new RSV vaccine, Arexv, and whether or not you should get it. Again, this video is not medical advice. Please speak with your own doctor about whether the RSV vaccine is right for you. If you learned something new from this video, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and share this video with someone who may also be interested in learning about the RSV vaccine. Thanks, and see you in the next video.